high. In this course, you will learn all about computer motherboard. You're going to learn CPU or central processing unit circuit, CPU power, and its circuit diagram. You're going also to learn about GMCH or Northbridge, ICH, RAM or random access memory, PCI connectors, AGP connectors, ATX jack, etc. We're going also to talk about schematics and circuit diagram. You will be able to understand and analyze any circuit diagram. We will see the types of RAM and its power and much more. So let's see an overview about the desktop motherboard. So as you see here, the first tank is this is the heatsink. So under this heatsink exists the processor, okay, or the CPU, central processing unit. Okay, so this is the heatsink. And over here we have RAM, as you see, the random access memory. So random access memory is installed, as you see. I can just push this two part and then remove the RAM. As you see okay so this is random access memory and this is the chips of this ram okay and to install it i can just align it here as you see and then push the both sides as you see until this part energized as you see okay and over here we have the slot as you see so this is the random access memory and here we have slot okay this is an empty slot okay so here this is the GMCH as you see okay this is the GMCH also the GMCH has an a heatsink exactly like this I will show you a GMCH with a heatsink in another motherboard okay and here we have the ICH okay so here this is GMCH always we find the GMCH near to the processor okay so the processor is in, under this heatsink I will show you the processor in another motherboard so processor the GMCH and here we have the ICH or the North Bridge and the suit bridge and we have here the ram okay so over here we have the CMOS battery as you see so this is the CMOS battery so the CMOS battery with the 3 volt you can remove this CMOS battery simply using any tool for example I can just do like this as you see and now the CMOS battery is removed as you see so the CMOS battery with 3 volt okay so this is 3 volt CMOS battery so let's put it back okay so here this is the ATX this is the power jack as you see okay this is the power jack okay I will show you right now a power plug okay so this is the power supply as you see over here as you see so this is the power plug okay and here we have the power jack as you see okay so this is the power plug and here we have the power jack okay so this is the power supply and also here as you see we have another power jack for the CPU. This is with four pins, as you see. This is for CPU, as you see. So here we have the power plug for the CPU. Okay, we insert it here. So this is a buzzer. Okay, this is buzzer. And here we have an LED light emitting diode. This, all these components are capacitors, as you see. We have here capacitors also here we have other capacitors as you see here all these are capacitors 
also we have capacitor so every integrated circuit contain capacitors okay so this is IDE connectors or jacks as you see this is IDE connectors this is the first IDE connector to connect the hard disk drive this is another IDE connector so we can connect the hard disk drive here or here so if we connect the hard disk drive here we can use this to connect the ODD or optical disk drive and this connector is for the floppy disk okay the floppy disk drive okay or FDD so this is for FDD or floppy disk drive this this are the same we can connect here the hard disk drive HDD or ODD optical disk drive or we can connect it here okay this is a crystal oscillator this means crystal oscillator and this this is a frequency changer or this is a frequency oscillator and this is crystal oscillator this integrated circuit gives the clock or the timing for the whole motherboard okay here as you can see here this is coil or inductor so this is coil or inductor okay and let's see this so here we have the PCE connectors okay this is PCE connectors we use these connectors to connect like for example a network card or a sound card okay this is for another or an external network card or sound card and this and this one this is the AGP advanced graphic port this connector is used to connect an external graphic card okay for example because the graphic card for this motherboard is integrated with the GMCH or the Northbridge but if you want to improve your graphic card you can use this port okay and connect another graphic card for example Nvidia graphic card with a very good performance you can use this connector not this so this is PCI use it to connect sound card or network card etc but for this this is special for graphic card as you see this is always we find it near to the graphic card or to the GMCH okay so here we have other capacitors as you see and we have th those are the ports okay all those are ports okay. so now as you see this is the CPU okay so this is the CPU and this is the CPU socket to remove the CPU I can just press this as you see this handle like this push it as you see now this is removed and then open this socket as you see and remove the CPU okay as you see so this is the CPU as you can see okay so this is the CPU and this is the socket the CPU socket always you should pay attention if you want to put the CPU pay attention to this symbol as you see we have here a small triangle okay always put attention to this triangle as you see here and also we have here as you see a small sign so I can just put it like this so do you see here so here it's not like this edges this is a special edge means this triangle should be next to this okay and then close this and then put the handle in its place as you see now the CPU is locked okay so this is the GMCH with the heatsink as you see so I can simply remove this heatsink as you see by by pushing this as you see like this I can remove it as you see so this is the heatsink 
Okay? So this is the head sink and this is the GMCH that contain the graphic card. So the graphic card is integrated with this GMCH. Okay? So we have here two parts. So let's put this headsync back. So you can just put it like that and push this as you see. It's simple. Okay. And here, as you see, we have the ICH or the surge bridge. So as I told you before, always the GMCH is near to the CPU or to the processor. Okay. So this is the processor circuit as you see we have here capacitors we have coils as you see this is coils or inductors and this is capacitors okay so this is mosfet as i told you before this is the frequency ic and this is the crystal oscillator so always this ic always gives the necessary clock for the whole motherboard okay and here this is the gmch or the north bridge and this is the capacitors that gives power to this GMCH okay and here we have the ICH here we have the CMOS battery with 3 volts okay so here as you see we have the PCI connectors okay these connectors as I told you before is used to connect other external cards like network card or sound card but as you see for this motherboard it doesn't contain the agp to connect an external graphic card as you see this is the place for the agp okay as you see okay the place for agp is empty okay and here, as you see over here, we have the RAM. As you see, this is the RAM slot. Okay, so this is the RAM slot. And here we have the RAM, the random access memory. As I told you before, it is easy to remove the RAM. Just push these two parts like this and the RAM will be removed. Okay. And to connect it, just align it here and push it in the both sides like this. Okay. The CPU circuit or the processor circuit. So as we see before, this is the CPU, okay? And this is the CPU socket, okay? So the CPU circuit contains one channel or more. So the power for the CPU is provided by these channels. So, because we have here three coils, as you see, this is the first coil or inductor, this is the second, and this is the third, means this CPU or this processor has three channels, okay? And in every channel, we find coil or inductor, capacitor, and MOSFETs, as you see. Also here, we have coil capacitors mosfets okay also here we have coil capacitor and mosfets so for this processor it has three channel okay also we find near to the processor some pf capacitor as you see here this is pf capacitor this is a chemical capacitor or polarized capacitor and this as you see here or this one is pf capacitor also here we have pf capacitor okay so here let's assume that we have this is the cpu okay so this is the cpu okay or processor this equal processor okay so the CPU means central processing unit, okay? So this CPU needs a power in order to be operated. The power is, we called it VCC core, okay? About 0 0.92.
to 1.2 volts. Okay? So, this the VCC core is coming from an IC. So, we have here the, as you see, this is the IC or the CPU IC that generate this voltage. But in order to generate this voltage, there is many steps. Okay? So, as you see, this IC should be powered by VN, about 19 volts. Okay? And then we have some signals like enable. Okay? And also clock. Okay? And of course, a ground, etc. So when this IC is powered up by 19 volt, it generates a control signal. As you see, this is the first control signal, and this is the second control signal. This first is will go to up gate, okay, and this will go to the low gate. So because we have gate, we mean the gate of the MOSFET. So let's let's assume that this is the MOSFET. Okay, this is the MOSFET Q. We have here drain. Okay, this is drain, and here we have source. This three are source, and here we have the gate. So this is the first MOSFET. Okay, so. So we have here some capacitors, as you see, this is PF capacitors, okay? All these are PF capacitors, so C1, C2, C3, and C4, okay? And this is the first MOSFET, so here we have about 19 volt, okay? So 19 volt will go through these capacitors. This is a filtering capacitors, and they will go to this MOSFET. So this is the control signal. Okay. So this MOSFET will be connected to another MOSFET. So this is the second MOSFET. Okay. This is the Q2 and this Q1. So here we have drain. Okay. And here we have source, and the source will be connected to the ground and over here we have the control signal, the gate, okay? So here we have the gate, the source and the drain. Also for here, source, here we have the gate, okay, and here drain, okay? And here, okay, it will be connected to this. So the VCC core will be, will be generated here. But after the generation of upper gate and low gate, so here normally we should have like some diodes. Okay, this is just for protection. This is a diode D1 here capacitors, as you see here. Here capacitors, okay. So this is plus and minus, plus and minus. So this is chemical capacitor and this is PF capacitor. And, and normally here we should have a coil L1 to generate this VCC core. So in order to generate this VCC core, as you see, we need an IC integrated circuit and we need two MOSFETs. So this is just one channel. Okay, but normally there is another channel. This is the channel number one. Normally we should, we have here channel number two and channel number three, the same principle. Okay, so we need the IC, we need two MOSFETs or more. Okay, so the first MOSFET is connected to 19 volt or to the power source and we have here PF capacitors, you know, this is a filtering capacitors, and this MOSFET will be connected to another MOSFET and the source or the drain in accordance to the state of the second MOSFET will be connected to the ground. Okay, and here between source and drain, it is connected directly to the CPU. Okay, so when this IC receives the clock and the, the enable signal 
and also other signals id signals here about eight signals one two three four five six seven eight all the signal this is id signals okay this is id all those are id signals okay so when do i see receive id signals enable signal the clock signal and 19 volt signal it will be generated the upper gate and lower gate control signal to mosfets and when this mosfet receive this control signal and also this mosfet the power will pass through this mosfet and then go through this diode and through this chemical capacitor so here we have plus as you see we have here plus and minus and then go through the coil and then generate the vcc coil about as i told you before 0 0.9 to 1.2 volt okay to see the gmch circuit so as you see here this is the gmch and this heatsink in the in the previous lecture we have seen the CPU circuit, okay, and we have seen that this is the CPU circuit. So coils, we have capacitor and MOSFETs, okay. So all these channels are here in order to generate the VCC car, in order to power the CPU, okay. Now we'll go and see the GMCH circuit, okay? So, the same principle, okay? The same principle. So, let's first remove this. I will remove this heatsink in order to see the GMCH. So, as you see, this is the heatsink, okay? So, this is the GMCH and the graphic card so the graphic card is integrated in this gmch okay so as you see here the same principle as the cpu okay we have seen that every coil hell means channel so for the cpu we have three channels but here for the gmch we have just one channel as you see we have here a coil and we have capacitors all these capacitors are filtering capacitors okay i will explain you all this in a separate circuit diagram okay so we have coil and we have capacitor and over here we have mosfets okay this is mosfets because we have this kind of mosfets you can find this kind of mosfet with just three pins or three terminals and also those also are mosfets as you see okay also we have mosfets with eight terminals and mosfet as you see here all these are mosfets with three terminals okay but the same principle always we have drain source and gate but for this MOSFETs with a terminal, we find that four terminals is drain, three for source, and the eight, the number eight pin is for gate. Okay, so the GMCH circuit is this. Okay, so basically the GMCH or the North Bridge and the South Bridge has the same circuit because this capacitor as you see this capacitor here all this capacitor are the filtering capacitor for the gmch or for the north bridge and those also are the filtering capacitor for the ich but basically the this is the mosfet for this ich and those is for the gmch okay so we will see all this in a separate schematic, okay? The random axis memory circuit, as you see over here. So this is the RAM, as I told you before. So let's remove this RAM. So we press just this part here, and we have the RAM, as you see. So this is the RAM, okay? So 
we have here the slots this is the first slot and this is the second slot here the same principle always always you will find capacitor coil and mosfets as you see okay so here we have mosfets as you see we have coil and we have capacitor okay so and if you focus here you will see here an ic so this is ic this is the ic that control this mosfets this ic control this mosfets i will show you in the schematic all these steps okay also here as you see over here we have also other mosfets here because basically the ram has two kind of power the vdd power and the vtt power so the vdd power is the main power and the vtt power is the power for the ram terminals okay so i will begin with the gmch okay gmch okay or the north bridge okay gmch or north bridge so let's assume that this is the gmch okay here this is the gmch okay and this gmch normally needs many powers okay 1.05 volt okay also it can be need 1.8 volt if the ram is ddr2 okay so in accordance to the kind of ram the G this voltage can be changed in accordance to the ram because we have many kind of ram so we have ddr1 DDR2 okay DDR3 DDR4 so DDR5 and we have others but this is the main RAMs so the power for this DDR1 is 2.5 volts okay and the power for the ddr2 is 1.8 volt so here for the ddr3 1.5 volt for the DDR, for the ddr4 1.2 volt and ddr5 1.1 volt okay so all this this is the main okay the main voltage so ram as you see this is ram main voltage but also there is other voltage for the ram the vtt so so the vtt voltage for the ddr1 is 2.5 volt divided by 2 so about 1.2 volt the vtt for this is 0 0.9 volt so for ddr the vtt okay so the power for the ram terminals is this divided by 2 so about 1.25 for this we have 1.8 so the vtt is 0 0.9 volt for ddr3 0 0.75 volt ddr4 0 0.6 volt and for this we have 0 0.55 volts okay so the gmch normally is powered by z 1.05 volt 1.8 volt etc and the responsible for the power of the gmch is the gmch ic this is the gmch okay ic Okay, so let's assume that this is the IC. We have many input signals. Okay, we have here many input signals. 
the main input signal is 19 volt about 19 volt this is the v in okay always and as you see we should have here two mosfet or more so this is for example q2 another mosfet q3 okay so let's assume that we have here the 19 volt okay this is the 19 volt goes here and also goes here so this is the drain okay so 19 volt okay and here we have the source okay this is the source okay and we have here the gate so this is the upper gate okay and here the same we have here so this is the lower gate and here we have source goes to ground okay and here of course we have drain so this will be 1.05 volts okay but this power will be passed through many capacitors okay many capacitors as you see chemical capacitor this is chemical capacitor and also coil l1 okay the same as we see before in the motherboard i show you how so we have here capacitors as you see and we have coil the same here as you see so we have many capacitors as you see and we have coil okay and we have the MOSFETs here same here this is the MOSFETs this is capacitor 3 or 5 or 6 etc this is filtering capacitor okay we have here coil and then we have 1.05 volt okay also here we have other capacitor but here this is a PF capacitors okay so for the ICH the same the same thing for ICH so we have here an IC this is IC that is responsible to power the ICH okay so this IC normally should have an input voltage okay input voltage about always 19 volt or more okay so here we have mosfets okay let's assume that q2 and q3 so this is mosfets we have here drain we have here source and gate so this is mosfet so so the, the drain is connected to 19 volt here we have capacitor okay this is the same principle okay capacity goes to ground okay and then we have here this is the gate the gate this is the upper gate okay and here as you see we have here this is the lower gate okay as you see so this is the source go to ground here we have drain and source will be connected to the drain and then go through main capacitor here okay this is chemical capacitor okay so and then uh, connect to the ground and go to ICH so the, the, the voltage also, also about 1.05 volt or 1.02 volt okay so for the RAM the circuit diagram for the RAM so let's assume that we have here the RAM okay RAM so for the random access memory it needs two voltage the vdd okay and the vtt this voltage is is for the the whole ram and the vtt is for terminals terminals means this this is terminals okay and other voltage is for this ships okay so let's assume that we have for example a ddr2 okay the kind of this ram is ddr2 so the ddr2 should be powered by 1.8 volt and 0.9 volt 
So VDD should be equal to 1.8 volt and VTT 0.9 volts. Okay. So let's see first the example of why I see that generate the VDD and the VTT for the RAM. So normally we have this IC. So this is RAM IC, okay, RAM integrated circuit, okay, and for this IC, this is the V in, okay, always about 19 volt, it can be 20 volt or 18 volt, etc. Let's take just 19 volt, okay, this is the V in. In this pin and of course we have a lot of signals we will see all that in the next uh, courses okay the signals in detail okay so we have here the v in so we have here ground okay so in this side we have thermosphets okay we have here q1 and q2 okay so this is the drain for this MOSFET, okay, goes to another 19 volt, okay, and here over here we have capacitor, okay, this is PF capacitor, all these are PF capacitor, and here we have source and gate, okay, so this is gate, okay, so this is upper gate, okay, and here we have source will be connected to this MOSFET so this is the drain of this MOSFET and this is the source so the source will be connected to the ground and the gate will be connected to this IC so this is lower gate okay so here in this side we will get the VDD okay this is the VDD okay of course here we have other capacitors chemical capacitors okay and coil okay so plus 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 so this is chemical capacitor and this is coil in this side of this ic we will we will get here the vdd for example for the for ddr ddr2 let's take ddr2 our example we will get 1.8 volt and in this side the same we have other MOSFETs so this is Q3 and Q4 okay so we have here source connected to the ground okay and this is the gate okay this is another upper another lower lower gate two okay so they have we have here one and one upper gate one and lower gate two here we have the lower gate two and so we have here this MOSFET, okay? This MOSFET should be connected, okay? To this 19 volt here, okay? And here we have source, as you see. So this is source will be connected to this MOSFET, okay? And gate here, so we have the upper gate two, okay? So, and we will get here the V, TT that is equal to 0 0.9 volt because we have the DDR2. Here, of course, we have capacitor, okay, connected to ground, and here we have another coil. We have here L1, here we have L2. So, this is the main component of the RAM circuit. So, this is RAM, okay, RAM circuit okay that we find in every desktop motherboard but sometimes we find that just one ic as you see here in our example here we have just this ic just it generate both vdd and vtt but you can't find also in some motherboard that there is two ic's that can be generated the VDD and VTT. So we find exactly like this. So we have, this is another example. We have, so the RAM IC, IC, 
okay and the ram ic that generate both vdd and vtt okay vdd and vtt has a reference that is different from this ic okay so we have the ram ic okay as you see here okay so here we have a mosfet okay we have mosfet here this is for example q4 and q5 so the drain of this mosfet is connected to 19 volts okay here we have of course capacitors if capacitor and the source of this will be connected to the drain of this mosfet and here we have this gate okay this is upper gate and here of course we have the source will be connected to the ground and we have here the lower gate okay and here or here we will we will get the vdd we will get the vdd okay the vdd so 1.8 volt vdd of course here we have capacitors as we see always we have ground here we have coil okay so this vdd will be applied okay to another ic as you see this is the ram ic so this is the vtt ram ic so this vdd means 1.8 volt will be applied to, to another ic that is powered with the same voltage 19 volt as the uh, volt source voltage and then this will gives to us the vtt here okay will gives to us here the vtt of course the same principle we will we will have here two mosfets okay and capacitors here and coil here okay the same pro with the upper gate and lower gate etc so the two methods that you can find in the desktop and also in the laptop motherboard for the ram circuit you can find one ic that generates the vtt and vdd the both voltage so the vdd is the main voltage for the ram and the vtt is the terminal voltage okay the voltage for terminal and you can also find just one ic as you see here that generate the vdd or you can find two ic's one it generates the vdd as you see and then based on the vdd we will get the vtt as you see but using another ic okay i want to explain to you more about the ram okay so we have here ram so i told you that there is many kind of ram so for ddr1 we have the vdd is 2.5 volt and vtt is 1.25 volt for ddr2 we have 1.8 volt and 0 0.9 volt for vtt always vtt equal vdt divided by 2 for ddr3 we have 1.5 volt 0 0.75 volt ddr4 1.2 volt and 0 0.6 volt for ddr5 1.1 volt and 0 0.55 volt okay so i have a question how can we know if the motherboard uses a ddr1 or ddr2 or ddr3 ram so if you focus here as you see here okay we have here 1.8 volt okay this is 1.8 volt so Okay, we have 1.8 volt means this slot or this RAM is DDR2. Okay, so this is a DDR2 RAM. Always the RAM you can differentiate between it using this. As you see, for the DDR2, we have this part here. 
okay it is divided here but for tree for example you will find here or here for other rams but you can simply use the slots okay simply you can use slots as you can see here okay here and here it is clear 1.8 volt means this is ddr2 ram slot okay so if you if you check here if you check this mosfet okay this mosfet or if you check this as you see this is the coil the coil that is responsible this coil is responsible for to power this ram okay so you will find here in this pin you will find 1.8 volt in this pin you will find 1.8 volt okay also in the plus terminal for this for this capacitor you will find 1.8 volt but where can we find i have another question where can we find the vtt 0.9 volts so because here we have this is the ddr2 so we have ddr2 here 1.8 volt vdd we will find it here in this coil and in this capacitors okay and the vtt we will find it in this as you see here we have here a small pf capacitor as you see this pf capacitors if you check this using the multimeter you will find 0.9 volt because 0.9 volt is for the terminals okay also if you connect if you connect the ram chip and you measure this as you see this resistor this is network resistor you will find here 0.9 volt and in the this capacitor the big capacitor as you see here pf capacitor you will find 1.8 volt okay so this is ddr2 memory slot here it is powered with the vdd that is equal to 1.8 volt and vtt that is equal to 0.9 volt okay i want just to add some informations as you see for so for the mosfet okay we can find the mosfet with three terminals okay so this is a mosfet as you see so we can find a mosfet with three terminals terminals so this is a mosfet here we have the gate here we have the drain and here we have the source okay always when this gate okay when the voltage okay applied to this gate here for example let's assume 1.5 volt is applied to this gate so the current will flow in this direction okay the current will flow in this direction from drone from drain to source if we have a pnp mosfet okay but if we have an npn mosfet the the current will flow in this direction from source to drain okay and also you can find a mosfet with eight terminals okay exactly like this okay find a mosfet with eight terminals so we have here okay this is drain all this and drain okay so this is drain here this is the gate and this is the source okay so the same principle we can do exactly like this as you see so this is gate and this is source and this is drain so as you see the drain is connected to four pins the source is connected to three pins and the gate as you see is connected to this pin so always the mosfet is operated when it receive a power in its gate okay the same principle as the transistor okay